Namaste, Vanakkam, Swagatam, everyone, and welcoming you all to another day of this lovely series, Navaratri 2021, celebrating Ammaji, the Divine Mother. So let's invoke Saraswati Devi. And yes, before that, happy Vijay Dasami to everyone. I'm sure you all are looking out and trying to get some new teachings today because it is believed that on Vijay Dasami, we have to go and we have to thank all our gurus in whatever form we have learned from them, like art forms, schooling, colleges, or whatever. So we go thank them wholeheartedly and we give back a little bit called a dakshna in whatever way possible. And we try to learn a new teaching because it's believed that it's like a new year, like that we are starting. So let's invoke Saraswati Devi and we'll go into the next part of this evening, welcoming you all. And I'm so happy to grace and grace this evening with all of you. Om Dinaganaya Vidmahe Vukrincha Patni Chadi Mahi Tanno Saraswati Prachodayate Om Om Tatparam Paryaya Vidmahe Jnana Lingeshwaraya Dimahi Tanno Guru Prachodayate Om Om Yoga Maharishi Dr. Swami Gita Ananda Giri Guru Maharaj Ki Jai. So yes, let's go and watch the theme of the series Navaratri 2021. Om Jai 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 Amma Ji Ke Anagar Amma ji, Amma ji, beloved Amma ji, Amma ji, Amma ji, most loving Amma ji, we all love you, Amma ji, we love you, Amma ji, we all love you, Amma ji, we love you, Amma ji, bestest, bestest Amma ji, bestest, bestest Amma ji, loving divine Amma ji, divine loving Amma ji, most loving Amma ji, most divine Amma ji, Amma ji. Amaji, Amaji, most loving Amaji, most divine Amaji, most loving Amaji, most divine Amaji, most loving Amaji. Jai Jai Amaji ke agaro gana. Yes, after our lovely theme, I welcome our dearest and most respected Dr. Sir, grace us all on this occasion and give us the welcome note. Namaste, Swagatam, Vanakkam, Bonjour, Bonjour, No, Bonasera. Welcome to Vijay Dasami special evening where we are celebrating our beloved Divine Ammaji. Ammaji that beautiful energy of the Divine Mother. And tonight we are going to begin with a beautiful presentation of the beautiful dance. A dance by the wonderful team from our Yoganjali Natyalayam, the wonderful girls who Amaji loves so much. And after that, we are going to have a spectacular sharing from our most beloved Lataji and Sangeeta and I'm so looking forward to this evening, an evening celebrating Ammaji on Vijay Dasami 2021, the night when the mother goddess, Sri Durga Devi, vanquishes the dark, ignorant arrogance of Mahishasura, and the light shines bright. Danyavadaha, let's have a wonderful evening together. Thank you so much, Dr. Sir, for the lovely welcome note. And yes, we have a lovely Bardhanatyam performance by our dearest students of Yognath. And you have seen them initially in the Durga dance and the Lakshmi dance. And today we have a lovely dance devoted to Goddess Saraswati herself. That's Jnana Shakti. So I welcome you all to watch them. 
and we have 10 of them, 10 of us actually, to be precise, I'm also part of it. And we have seen them in the different dances. So here we have sort of brought together all of them in one dance. So we are going to have a lot of fun watching it. And yes, we are going to see our dearest and most favorite little Niyati. And then we have Sashini, um, B. Vidyaka from UK. And then we have Hira, MS Hira. We have Kritika, we have Abhinaya. And then we have Balasundriyaka, Vidya Shankariyaka, myself, and we have Abhi. So let's watch the wonderful performance which we have ready only for you all and devoted to Saraswati Devi and our Jnana Shakti Ammaji.
hope you all enjoyed this lovely dance and yes we enjoyed performing for performing and, and choreographing and putting it all together thank you to dr sun the isnamis for the lovely choreography and for the teamwork of all of our yognath students who came together even though you know we are limited because of the covid but thanks to the team efforts that we were able to make this possible thank you everyone for making this possible now i will invite our lovely speakers for tonight and looking forward to this lovely session with them so i invite yoga shakti lata and yoga charini sangeeta and they are in front of us here and yes we are going to hand over the screen and everything over to you looking forward to your expression of gratitude to our dear amma ji and on the special location of vijay dasmi over to both of you Namaste, everyone. I'll let Lata begin as my senior. <laughs> Hi, Lata. <laughs> Namaste. Now you hear my voice. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Sankita. Thank you, Divya, and all the dancing shaktis. to see the saraswati dancing so beautiful like always this beautiful beautiful uh, young goddesses to dance so at first i want to give uh, amaji divine dearest amaji a flower a rose from brahma's garden she is not able to be here with us because she has her shift in hospital but the rose is from her garden and smelling very very beautiful so my topic today is spiritual gardening under guidance of tears divine amaji thank you for this opportunity to send my regards to you on this navaratri evening and in your 28 78th day of the birthday year 28 is fine yes she's like that <laughs> it's also true so like as one she pointed out have a garden first time i traveled ashram i was able to and it was allowed to visit ashram in year 1997 after learning or studying the kidananda step by step lessons here in berlin in yoga school ashram tresha keshapre koi as preparation for this um uh, deep traveling into the knowledge um of yoga science of yoga it was overwhelming experience to enter in ashram which really opened all senses in that way um skin smells colors heat warm um on day of bengal huge plants sweet fruits flowers and to meet at first to meet amarji in reality and renuka akka was first time there also because uh she helped it a much like her like always she did and doctor sir was away in in the university to study medicine so swami ji and amaji prepared a huge spiritual garden for us students all all over all years how to uh, let a spiritual garden to grow even if you have a small garden like i have here near to berlin you have to know some rules they are needed at first you need a soil test you have to prepare the soil and how they did that as part of parampara they built out up ananda ashram 
and they share it at first with us new students, correspondence course um, for the newcomers. Ten, they, they looked, I think, especially Amaji with her huge correspondence in letters, which he, she called always nail post. We are snail post. And she was looking for perennials, plants which doesn't grow, we don't grow only one season, but over years. Uh, say, uh, showing their face yearly, never ending. And they didn't look, especially Amati didn't look for annual perennials or annual plants only for one season. And now we see her world wide garden is, is there. In every continent of Earth, on Earth, she has her own garden. <laughs> and some small garden is like me too. So she was looking for perennials, vegetables, trees, herbs, and looking with Swamiji for good drainage, 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 into soil. soil. The soil must be, must be very safe. She was watering early in the morning, as in, uh, in Ashram, for in Arati and quiet sitting on rooftop. And she, she knew even new plants, you have to water shallow and but frequently. Later watering. Later, if you have a very um, good plants, perennials with deep roots, um, you, you they can improve, they can uh, tolerance. Um, a deeper root watering even lessons, not such as other ones. Like in evening satsangas with her. She, she knew also fertilized the new plants in the first year regularly and up and applicate some mineral minerals for them. Later only in spring season, only once in a year. It was a need because the roots have been already deep and the plants have been prepared. And she put different flowers in other um, flower beds. She had many in Ashram and all of these uh, flower beds have been very important to her. There was nothing like a flower bed is more, more important than the other. Everybody find and get her own place in her huge heart, loving heart. And, uh, but before she did that, before she did put us, dig us in our flower pot, in flower beds, she was looking at us in our own um, pot, original bot before she dig us deep into the earth. And she said always, because I was asking, how can you know that there's our place? She was saying, I am a body reader. If I see one, I know, I know there's a good place to grow. And she said also, sit straight, be, be quiet and listen like Aishwarya already told in one lesson uh, some days ago. Sit straight in, in your asana, be quiet, pratyahara, tarana, dhyana, and listen, dhyana, because the inner voices are very deep in us. If you are, if you are not quiet, if you don't sit straight, we cannot hear them. And her garden, like all gardens, is a composition. Like poems, music, dance, 
it has its own history. And she said always, remember to remember. And in her garden, always love, joy, talks, tolerance, spiritual wisdom, and also some rain was there. But she was always able to stand up, to keep up. And she was never pity for her position, a difficult position. Um, I have been many times in upstairs over the years, and I was always wondering how she can manage this all. It, it looked really easy, but it was so difficult. I was sitting on her, to her third feet and hearing what she was speaking to different persons, to different um, students, and everyone was welcome. And she was always able to give a wise answer for their questions, even if they don't ask anything. Um, and she pointed always out her three R's, regularity, repetition, rhythm, to grow in a safe way. She said also, also many times to me, because I was asking something, she, she said to us, Earth was never a safe place, but she be cheerful, be always cheerful. This is the attitude, the attitude we need. This is all what I want to say today. Thank you, Amati, for everything. And once more, this beautiful rose to you. <laughs> Have a good time. <laughs> Thank you. Ah, well, <laughs> how to follow that? <laughs> how to follow that? Ah, thank you so much, Lataji. No problem. Thank you. And on this very auspicious day, my deep gratitude to uh, Puja Swamiji, Puja Amaji, uh, my Acharya Guru, uh, Dr. Nanda Balayogi Bhavanani, Devasena Miss. Uh, Divya Priya Bhavanani, Anandraj Bhavanani, the Gitananda family, the Bhavanani family, all the gurus of the Parampara, all of the teachers that have brought us here. Such a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful occasion. And uh, oh, what a day. <laughs> <laughs> On this most auspicious day in which Sri Durga defeated the demon of ignorance, Mahishasura. We celebrate Amaji as an embodiment of the goddess uh, Durga. And I was thinking about that because Amaji never truly invited from us or in us um, the celebration of Durga in the ashram. We were always thinking about Durga. We were always celebrating Durga in smaller ways, but we somewhat kept Durga at bay because Durga is a very powerful goddess and her wrath, her uh, um, anger, the way that she can defeat the demon could be very easily misunderstood. So it was the teaching that Amaji would very, um, very carefully dispense and I wanted to perhaps connect how this very sublime wrath, divine wrath of Durga manifested in Amaji by first of all saying that when I met Amaji the, for the first time in 2009, I thought she was like 50 meters high. <laughs> she looked so tall, she looked so tall. Um, and I felt so small. <laughs> it's incredible. She walked through Satsanga Hall in the ashram and she looked mm -hmm. really, really tall. And I, some, some of the mentors prior and uh, the previous day talked about Hamaji and how she led, how she stood up and set up and was always, you know, never seemed hurried or worried or stressed, right? And I think that that's also how I perceived that being tall, that she was 
uh, always embodying the teachings of the parampara. She wasn't just sharing them, she was truly embodying them. She was leading by example, always, always leading by example. And so in the same way that goddess Durga defeats the demons of, and the enemies, right, of the, uh, of light, of Satyam, of Anandam. In the same way, Amaji gave us some beautiful teachings about the Shatripu, which we are hoping to defeat, and which she led us to really contemplate deeply. What I loved about how Amaji taught us to approach the Shatripu is that she never made us feel scared of the demons that we have inside. She never told us, be careful of the demons, watch out for the demons. She always said, meet your demons head on, face your demons, look at yourself, witness yourself, no excuse, no excuse. Mm -hmm. And so, for example, the Shatripus, the six of them, Kama, craving, she always encouraged us on our one day off. <laughs> Let's start with that. Let's start with that, the most important one, cravings. When we had the day off, she always encouraged us to go to town and have that indulgent bite, right? Have that cappuccino, have that piece of pastry, have that little indulgent something. Always find the best one, of course, but have it include it so that you could mm -hmm. feed that craving and control it rather than completely take it off and then constantly think about it. So I would like to celebrate Amaji as someone who is in love with good pleasure because there's so much misunderstanding, especially in the West of um, um, desire and the role of desire. And I think it's important that Amaji's example shines in that we must refine our senses through experience, not through frustration. That's really important. The second one, Krodha, anger. Uh, Amaji could get angry. <laughs> she can still, uh, although yeah, she's yeah, in yeah, Santosham yeah. right now. She's very much in Santosham, Amaji. We see you in your Santosham, uh, however, uh, there's definitely moments in the ashram where anger was directed appropriately. And so um, she always used to mention to me when I was in the ashram, uh, do not become a doormat just because you think that anger is bad. In fact, you may want to use anger when it's appropriate for dharma to shine. And so I think that that's another wonderful teaching of Amaji as Durga, Sri Durga, that when the time is right and when the context is right, it's important to um, allow the emotion of anger to be appropriately directed to protect some of the yamas and niyamas, for example. The next one, Loba, greed. Um, I always remember when uh, Divya Priya and Anandraj were very tiny, uh, uh, already very wise, so most of the time, but very tiny. And I remember that Amaji used to teach us by teaching them, because you know our small animal self was childish most of the time, and we were greedy. You know, with some of our greed may come out even in spiritual teachings. Some people wanted more and more spiritual teachings. That's a form of greed. And I remember when Divya Priya and Anandraj would maybe fight with each other, and whatever happened, you know, like children, Amaji always used the opportunity to make it a teachable moment for us as well, meaning that it's not just children that are childish, but the ego, the developed ego needs to go through the childish stage to be refined. And so um, again, making friends, like you would never mistreat the children for being greedy. It's part of their you know, evolutionary process in the same way Amaji never made us feel ashamed of being greedy, even being attached to her or to Dr. Sir or you know, to Swamiji's teachings. Um, so continuing on, mo moha, delusion, um, well, 
Amaji used her sarcasm really well to make sure that when we thought we were in a very high state of meditation, she would come <laughs> with her sword of discernment and slay. <laughs> and be like, are you falling asleep? Are you dreaming about ice cream? Are you dreaming about coffee? And people were like, oh my God, yes, I was totally doing that. Even though I looked, I looked so right in the state of Kaivalya. So what better than sarcasm could, you know, cure delusion? And then Mada arrogance. So I never, mm -hmm. never, never, never witnessed Amaji being arrogant, even though, mm -hmm you know, on a social scale, she could have, she could have been because of her grand uh, life and her state and her stage in human development, she could have been arrogant, but she was never arrogant, even though she was mm -hmm. always the tallest in the room physically as well. And so she could have been, you know, towering and arrogant that way, but she was never arrogant. And I think that that's something that she taught us by example, that the humblest you are, the more powerful you are. But powerful from the point of view of spirit, not powerful from the point of view of mm -hmm. society. And so to make a connection between arrogance and true power, the power of, you know, viriam uh, and, uh, and vice versa. And lastly, jealousy, Matsarya. Um, Amaji mm -hmm. was never jealous of us. She's never jealous of us. She treated me like a daughter. And she allowed me to have the opportunities that truly a mother grants her children. She allows me to publish books, to teach the teachings of the Paramparai, to perform with Dr. Sir. She always gives me permission. None of the things that we're doing today that I am blessed to do today would happen without Amaji's permission. Mm -hmm. And so as a true mother, She's always blessed, and it's not just me. She always blesses all of us, all of the students, um, as children, as her own children. She was never jealous. She could have been. All of this, she could have definitely been. She could have been jealous of Dr. Sir, of Divya Priya, of Devasena. There was never that. And so with that, I would like to then, again, you know, thank you, Amaji, because you will be watching this or you are watching it now. And our um, daughter, so your granddaughter, Saraswati's Pearls, has been published in Italian. Oh, you can't see it, but that's okay. Here we go. I just wanted to show you, Amaji, the grand, the, the, you, have a grand, you have an Italian granddaughter <laughs> in this book here. And, um, and so I would like to, if, we, if it's possible, if I can take uh, two more minutes, uh, I would like to very humbly and taking responsibility for all of the mistakes to intone the first two verses of the Mahisha Sura Mardini. Um, and I would like to, for us to imagine the truth uh, because the hymn always begins with, oh mother. And so with the dedication to Amma as the mother in this hymn, right? As the, the real Durga that she is dispelling all of the enemies of our, of our spirit. So all of the beauty comes from the teachings. I learned this hymn with Devasena Miss, so I thank Devasena. All of the mistakes are mine. <laughs> so all of the praises to Devasena, all of the mistakes are mine. So <laughs> with that. The translation says, oh mother, the source of joy for the mountain. And King, the gliding in the Vindhyas, which is the best among the mountains. The source of joy for Vishnu, the one saluted by Indra, the one belonging to the family of Shiva, the one head of the entire world as the family, the one granting more and more benefits and I would add the one beloved by Swamiji, the one beloved by all of her children. And the one beloved by us all, daughter of the mountain, O goddess, the destroyer of the demon Mahish. Mm.
ಭೂರಿಕೃತೆ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಹೇ ಮಹಿಷಾಸುರಮರ್ದಿನಿ ರಮ್ಯ ಕಪರ್ದಿನಿ ಶೈಲಸುತೆ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಹೇ ವಿ ಲವ್ ಯು ಅಮ್ಮಜಿ ವಿ ಲವ್ ಯು ಅಮ್ಮಜಿ ವಿ ಲವ್ ಯು ಅಮ್ಮಜಿ ಓಂ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು thank you so much dearest and most respected lata and dearest sangeeta finishing off with the mahisha sir mandini mm-hmm. and a reminder to everyone that i think uh, sangeeta presented the, i think the first 10 verses last year in the navaratri series that we had done last year we shakti celebrating the tri shakti so it's nice that uh, you were able to conclude with that and thank you so much lata for your wonderful uh, moments that you put in such beautiful and loving loving words actually because the truth is that all of you have spent so much time with amma ji that you know you it's not you have seen her from an outer space whenever she comes out and all that like you have been with her you have lived with her you have experienced a lot of moments and daily routine like she was part of our daily routine and it's lovely and thank you so much lata for your sharing of you know the memories that really touched you and the teachings of sit straight be quiet listen and i think it's important that and thank you for reminding us those teachings on this wonderful day of vijay dasmi because on this day we have to go back thinking about all the teachings that our dearest and most respected gurus gave us and i think um, i'll add to that that i don't think she added that to the six months for students i think this was more in the last years i think like two years ago i think in the vijay dasmi she added to it saying that so she said sit straight be quiet listen respect your guru respect your parents and then be a yogi <laughs> yes. was a short addition yes. that she made. yeah i know thank you she she can <laughs> she can go on and on and on and always her words and the things that she says are so important and they really mm. fit in mm. our daily life and you know every moment of our life mm. and thank you so much sangeeta for bringing in the shatri puja concept kama krodha loba moha madha matsarya actually that was also wonderful teaching to think about on vijay dasmi because these are the actual enemies of our life and then we go around thinking our mm. own people our fellow human beings who live with us on this planet we think they are our enemies but actually these enemies are within us and that we have to understand and kick them out we don't have to kill them kick them out that's all <laughs> because i think it's better than killing them <laughs> at maybe state this like when you know devi durga had to destroy mahishtasura when it comes to that level you have to kill them but i think at a general state kicking them out would be much better and thank you so much sangeeta for bringing out so many little proverbs i think i heard quite a few that amma ji used to say and it was wonderful hearing them again and again and thank you so much both of you you have really made this evening special and this navratri 2021 special and this vijay dasmi 2021 very special thank you so much for gracing us on this occasion and i'm sure that the audience also agree with me on this point and i welcome our dear as dr sir to give us the concluding thank you dear <laughs> thank you so much i say we have had yet another wonderful day wonderful evening <laughs> celebrating our divine amma ji and my dear finish berlin yoga aunt <laughs> yoga shakti lata ji what a beautiful way you brought out amma ji as a gardener and understanding that each of her children each of the students 
was not to be put in a flower bed just in the ashram, but those plants had to grow in their own place. And they had to grow, they had to grow into trees and spread the teachings wherever they are. And Amaji nurtured each one like a gardener nurtures each plant. And what a beautiful expression of the love that Amaji has had and has for each and every one of us, nurturing us, giving us the lesson we need at that time, not the lesson we want, <laughs> not the lesson we want, but the lesson we need. And that is where the role of the guru comes in, the mother eagle comes in. And Sangeeta, the way you brought in the Shatvipus, and I remember Ammaji in the summer intensive going through the Shatvipus and all the dramas we did. You were here, Giriraj was here, Christoph was here, and all the fun the kids had in the Yoganjali over it. And I think your perspective on the Shatvipus is so beautiful because it brings out Ammaji's approach to tackling all these challenges that we face on our spiritual journey. Mm -hmm. And as you said, Ammaji and arrogance I have never seen and 50 years I have been her son, her student and now her devotee. Mm -hmm. I have never seen her jealous of anyone. Those two mm -hmm. Shatripos totally and it's a very beautiful statement when you made it, it made me contemplate how a human being could be there without arrogance and jealousy uh, you don't find such human beings on this planet. A real beautiful, beautiful, beautiful imagery that comes out when my dear Lata and my dear Sangeeta have talked of Amma. And before we end tonight, I would like Sangeeta to officially announce the upcoming offering we are making, which we offer at the Lotus Feet of Ammaji, an offering on Nada Yoga. So maybe you could take a minute and just mention it because it's Vijay Dasami this morning. So we welcome you, Sangeeta, to just make a mention of the Nada Yoga program coming up. Thank you so much, sir. It's a huge humbling joy and deep honor uh, to announce this immersion. We called it an immersion because it is a sadhana more than a course that is just a rational offering. It's a full immersion into the teachings of Swami Gitananda and the Paramparai uh, of uh, Swamiji uh, that gathers all of the teachings on Nada Yoga, on vibration, on sound, on deep listening, on all of the teachings that are already there. The teachings are there everywhere. Um, we are uh, simply, in quote, gathering them all because it is a calling that I feel. Um, to share them in a systematized manner, uh, divided into six modules that are a step-by-step -step, uh, process of learning and practice uh, that will begin in December and will culminate in June. And um, the details have been shared in the beautiful uh, presentation by Dr. Sir this morning. We'll make sure we'll share that more on all of the social media and by email. But the intention of the course is to, uh, again, uh, clear and present another jewel of Swamiji's teaching. So it's not that we are creating anything new, particularly me truly, is that we are offering it at the feet of the lotus feet of the Guru to, to share it with more and more people and also preserve the teachings, make sure that the teachings are preserved and shared authentically by Dr. Sir, and that um, a lot of confusions about Nada Yoga, the Yoga of Sound, and other things that may come from people who do not belong to a living tradition may dispel because these teachings are handed down like all of the Gitananda teachings, and so they are truly authentic. And so that's another part of the intention is to offer something that is authentic that can bring people back to the source of the Gitananda family as well as the Paramparai. So that's the intention and I feel really humbled, a little overwhelmed, but I'm riding with Durga and nothing is going to come our way. <laughs> <laughs> and so we're going to make this happen. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. May we be blessed and protected.
thank you so much sangeeta and thanks to dr sir for you know reminding us on that because it's very important that you should have it, it should be part of this program because we are concluding this and we are showing a next way where we are going to come in something new and i'm looking forward for it eagerly and yes i'm in for sure <laughs> i'll be in your list and it's something that i love and you know anything to do with singing music sound you know a contemplation you know i would be the first person that <laughs> thank you so much for making this possible and congratulations to our dear sangeeta for putting out the pearls i think initially how many years ago was it the saraswati pearls i, I don't know exactly when you initially put the first one out 2013 okay yeah yeah so that was also wonderful work by uh, sangeeta and thank you dr sir also and then now you know there is another is <laughs> so pretty <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for that and yes all of you please remember to join us for the concluding session tomorrow of navratri 2021 celebrating amma ji the divine mother and we have a australian new zealand family joining us tomorrow from down under and we are going to enjoy tomorrow's session for sure and remember all, what all amma ji has done for us and try to give back a little bit of what she has given because no way not even this lifetime not even thousand lifetimes are enough to give back to her as much as you know how much she has given to us thank you everyone for always being there blessing us supporting us and always loving us thank you uh, lata and sangeeta for joining us today and making this particular day and this session a lovely one and a memorable one please join me in for the shanti mantra and we'll see you all tomorrow oh. loka samasto sukhinu sarve janah sukhinu bhavantu om shanti hi shanti hi shanti hi thank you everyone see you all tomorrow same place same time another family uh who's going to come and meet us and discuss a lot with us and we have another session also tomorrow which is going to be a suspense one so join us to see them